here they are recording this. So no one thing is mentioned by just one writer. There's a lot of aspects to it. You remember what had happened? Jesus had started performing miracles. It started first at the wedding of the king of Galilee when he changed the water into wine and the people began to follow him. But then after that, most of the miracles that he was performing, they were personal miracles, individuals, people that needed to heal. Peter's mother-in-law with a fever, one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. But now suddenly, here he has grasped the hearts of such a multitude of people that for some reason, the writers reported this way. By the time they got late in the day, Jesus is preaching and teaching, and they are following him. It's hot. They're hungry. There's now 5,000 men besides the women and children. Five thousand men, besides the women and children, there. they recorded that. They made note of that. Five thousand men, besides the women and children. Well, I think logically it'd be easy to say there would at least be fifteen thousand or more there. Now that doesn't seem like much to you until we think about it this way. Can you imagine a crowd like that? We've got a few hundred people here tonight, but there's a lot of prayer, a lot of invitation. There's a lot of advertising that goes out. And here, after all of that, you've still got just a few hundred people. Here Jesus has 5,000 men besides the women and children. He never had a calling card. He was never on the internet. He didn't have a PA system so everybody could hear just right. He didn't have a radio and television ministry. He didn't have any special program. He didn't have a team to go in in front of him to organize everything. Here he is now with 5,000 men besides the women and children that have come to the heat of the day hoping some way that maybe the wind would carry just a few words, one sentence to and they can hear nothing more than one sentence from this Messiah that had the power to give words life to change them forever. It would be worth the trip. It would be worth it all just to hear him say one sentence to them. Such power in his words that they gather together and in the heat of the day they get hungry. And the disciples try to come up with a solution. They think, let's take an offering. And they realized they were broke. They said, this would buy 200 penny worth of bread. We can't feed 5,000 men besides the women and children. But then Andrew speaks up and says, we have a lad here that has two fishes and five barley loaves. <laughs> Now listen, if you don't get this, you're going to miss the point of the whole message. How many were there? 5,000 men besides who? Women, women and children. 5,000 men. For some reason, they didn't count the women and children. And he said, we have a lad here. You hear what I'm saying? Jesus performed the miracle through somebody that others didn't count. They never even counted him. They never even looked to him. He didn't count for anything. You're not hearing what I'm saying right now. God can take a person that the world looks at as unworthy and don't even count them. Nobody else may have counted you in. Nobody else may have counted you worthy. Nobody else may have counted you good for anything else. But the Lord said, I can the job. Miracles always begin with what you have. Yeah. Man. Miracles do not begin with what you do not have. God takes what you have and He multiplies it and blesses it. It doesn't matter if it's a jawbone or a donkey. He uses what you have. It doesn't matter if it's a sling and five stones. He uses what you have. It doesn't matter if you can say, like the disciples, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. I give out of thee in the name of
says, well, command them to sit down in companies of 50 on the grass. They're hungry. That'd take quite a bit of time for 15,000 plus people to set them down in companies of 50. See the difference between Jesus and people? Yeah. Why did he do that? Well, two things. First of all, he's telling us miracles. He doesn't do anything out of need and he doesn't do anything in haste and he doesn't do anything in your time. Right. He Amen. says miracles come about because of a process. It all comes about because we follow him. The first miracle, his mother said, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And the water was changed to wine. Here we have another miracle, Jesus giving a command. There's always a command. A command for us to follow so that we will know we have faith in his word and what he is saying. So he commands them to sit down. That takes a lot of time. It takes a long process. He gets them in order. And second of all, not only do we see the process, but now, suddenly they're setting them down in 50s. Now everybody counts. He says, you overlooked them. You didn't count them, but I count all of them. Everyone needs something to eat. Everyone is hungry. So they get them all seated and come to the Lord. And then he takes those two fish and five loaves. And he says, it's time to ask the blessing. You better hold on to me. I'm about to have a fit tonight. You do understand. Fifteen thousand people, five thousand men besides the women and children. You do understand. Two fish and five loaves of bread is not enough. Jesus is blessing what's not enough. Say, I don't like this, 
and I'm broken, but thank God I'm going to get what I need out of it. And God is going to perform a miracle through it. Every time they lie on you, say, thank God that, that the Lord knows the truth. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you. Say all manner of evil against you for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward. 